Hey, welcome, uh, welcome back to the Hang Space here at VMworld 2015. Uh, my name is Gabriel Chapman. I'm a cloud architect with SolidFire. Going to talk with you a little bit today about what we call SolidFire Agile Infrastructure and how it integrates into what we commonly refer to in the VMworld as the Software Defined Data Center. So uh, let's have at it. Um, just real quick, SolidFire, we are an all flash uh, distributed scale out storage platform with some rich QoS feature sets that are built into it. Uh, I'll go over a little bit of that as uh, we go forward here, but I'm also pretty much going to focus on the state of what we call, um, or what we're looking at more like the next generation data center. So we'll talk a little bit about in terms of uh, what I do at SolidFire as a cloud architect. I essentially put together and work with our key value partners to do agile infrastructure. I think of agile infrastructure as kind of a fancy word for converged infrastructure, but we take it a few steps further by you know, providing a little more value on top of that, right? So we're gonna do more integration, we're gonna do actual workloads that we test and validate against, uh, kind of walk through all of that as well. So uh, a little bit about me. So gosh, if I haven't just plugged myself enough, uh, like I said, Gabriel Chapman, I've been in technology for roughly 18 years, as terrifying as that may be. Uh, 15 years as an end user on the end user side where I was doing everything from tech support to uh, end user computing up into storage and virtualization for a major global company uh, where I architected and delivered a lot of agile type technologies. So um, for me, a natural fit was to come over to SolidFire. I have been part of the VMware vExpert program for the last five years or so. I can't even remember. Uh, you can stalk me online at Bacon is King on Twitter. Uh, read my blog, GabrielChapman.com. So, and like I said, uh, email's there, Gabriel.Chapman at SolidFire. Shoot me a note anytime. So enough about me, because that's the last thing you want to hear about. So just a quick agenda. We're going to talk about the next generation data center here. We're going to talk about you know, who is SolidFire and what we do. And then we'll talk about the SolidFire Agile Infrastructure Platform and what that, what that looks like for you as a customer or a partner to potentially leverage to build uh, agile cloud delivery models, um, you know, large workloads, small workloads, who kind of cover the whole gambit based on uh, our, our unique value proposition in the technology space. So next generation data center, really what is that, right? You've probably heard everybody come up here and talk about the, uh, you know, the cloud computing, cloud native apps, DevOps, agile, uh, lean, continuous integration, continuous delivery. There are a number of there's a video playing at the same time, great. Um, there's a, a number of <laughs> things that we can talk about in that particular space, so hopefully I'll be able to concentrate while this person jabbers in my ear. So regardless of the name, the desired outcome is the same. I want to be able to, or you as a customer wants to be able to have uh, you know, a solution that kind of looks like what we should be building going forward. You know, a lot of discussion around legacy, a lot of uh, challenges around the legacy technology space that we want to address. And what we're really looking for is things that are software defined uh, in terms of you know, their agility, their ability to be leveraged easily, quickly. Uh, you know, private cloud tends to be a very hot topic, hybrid cloud, IT as a service, and infrastructure 2.0. If you look at the types of technologies that are being delivered to, you know, delivered to you on a daily basis through your phone, through your mobile web apps, through uh, the IT as a service or software as a service deliverables, those technologies are being built on the types of platforms that need to be able to very much uh, accommodate a lean uh, and agile approach. And that's really what we're going to look at. We're trying to create highly scalable applications that are agile that are automated, that are DevOps focused, and then wrapping around predictability uh, on top of that, right? So, what are we doing in terms of uh, the challenges that we're addressing? You know, we kind of look at the legacy data center approach where there's a lot of different issues, so, you know, it's single tenant workload, it's gonna be hardware defined, it's gonna be all of that legacy stuff that we've been battling with for the last 20, 25 years uh, to implement and moving more towards the solutions that we, like I said, we see in the cloud computing space where it's multi-tenancy, it's a lot of disparate mixed workloads. We're not just buying technologies to service a point solution. We're trying to get a broader depth and broader width of applications that we can run on the same platforms because we can get better economies of scale by doing that. We want those solutions to be able to scale out. We want to be able to address capacity and performance on demand. All of these things kind of dovetail into what this new type of data center should look like, wants to start to look like. Like I said, we're beaten over the head every day or every year 
uh, the VMware space and OpenStack and others with this concept of the you know, software defined and, and being able to move forward. And that's what we're really trying to address. So as a customer, most of you have a ton of different choices at your disposal. Uh, you know, in, 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 in infrastructure space, I mean, it is fairly, you know, it's fairly saturated with a lot of different technologies, whether it's going to be something like hyper-converged, which is an appliance-based model, or rack-scale converged, which you're looking like something like an Evo rack, or the traditional converged infrastructure platforms themselves. You know, reference architectures, almost everybody has one that's out there. Most of the time it's, you know, taking all those bits and pieces of the puzzle and putting them together and make it look real pretty. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like a blueprint. You know, we all do that. That's kind of a table stakes. You know, and then we have different things from other vendors. So you have something like from IBM, or you have something from an HP or a Dell, where it's all of their technology stack in one, you know, one box or one skewable item that you can purchase. So you know, there's no shortage of different choices that you have when it comes to how you want to address the infrastructure for next generation data center. So with those choices are options, right? And we kind of look at, if I build this out, it, it really talks about the different areas of the spectrum in terms of you know, easier to harder from you know, lock-in, where it's like I'm completely locked in, to less lock-in, to no lock-in at all, flexibility versus non-flexibility. And you know, all of those cost efficiencies are built in on top of that. So we'd like to just look at who addresses the, you know, the different variables in terms of what these choices look like. You know, SMB companies, startup companies, the small, medium enterprise, they have different choices. They tend to flex more towards a converged stack or a hyper-converged stack or a solution that's a little more turnkey in nature um, because the flexibility or the complexity or sophistication of their environment may not be as challenged as something in a very large enterprise or even more so in the hyperscale. So if we look at the Twitters of the world, the Facebooks or the Googles, we see what those groups have done. They've gone out and created their own technologies, their own switches, their own server components. They've built infrastructures that are outside the norm for most, you know, 99.9% .9 of the companies out there. There's probably, you know, that 100 to 200 companies on the planet that really kind of need that kind of infrastructure flexibility. The rest of us, you know, most of the people here in this uh, conference are looking at solutions that are totally different. So, you know, they're going to come from multiple vendors. And, you know, we want to take those and make those best of breed decisions in terms of choices that are going to allow us to be, you know, a little bit more right in the middle in terms of like ease of implementation um, the level and degree of vendor lock-in that we're going to want to address or tolerate, as well as, you know, cost efficiencies and implementation flexibility. So, all right. So that's next generation data center. That's kind of like, you know, where we see certain things going, um, what that space is looking like. You know, it's still being defined in, in very much a, a lot of respects, but the reality is, is that, you know, you're getting bombarded on a daily basis with a lot of different technology choices. And so what we're going to talk about, you know, right now is uh, what SolidFire does. Uh, just kind of a base brief cursor over what our technology does. And then kind of go into what that agile infrastructure, how we are addressing that next generation data center with our, our key partners. So we are the all flash storage platform for the next generation data center. If I have not hammered home this point uh, enough times, it's, you know, it's kind of what we, we focused on in terms of uh, you know, our value add. It's a scale out flexible architecture with self-healing high availability built into it where we wrap uh, guaranteed performance in the form of quality of service at the volume level and you know, rich ecosystem in terms of you know, automation and inline deduplication, data reduction, compression, thin provisioning, all of these technology solutions that make Flash even more viable uh, at a capacity standpoint. We've wrapped around that this great notion that you should only have two choices when it comes to storage. How much do I need and how fast does the workload need to work? And then we can guarantee that. So it's really, you know, like I said, it's kind of a different architecture and compared to what most storage platforms that you've seen in the marketplace today, which are usually tend to be a dual controller based architecture with multiple disk shelves below. For us, every single node is a storage node and a compute node. You know, it's, everything is in each one of those, and it's a shared nothing distributed scale out solution that can basically scale from roughly four nodes to roughly 100. So you're going from roughly, say, 30 terabytes to you know, 3 point something, 3.4 petabytes of storage in a fully scaled out 100 node solution today. Uh, now granted, not everybody needs 3.8 petabytes of flash, but for customers to do, we can kind of talk to them about that. Uh, but the reality is, is it's what we've really tried to do here is create something that really scales with the type of applications that scale in this next generation data center. As we re-architect and redesign our application space to address these different challenges that we're facing based on the new technologies that are available. You know, a lot of applications will be rewritten 
uh, completely differently over the next, I would say, two to five years based on the feasibilities and performance characteristics of technology that are coming out today and in the future. So I mean, it's, it's an interesting space to live in. Uh, you know, the data center and the applications that way they are constructed, the way they are designed and architected today will be completely different in 24 months. Uh, I think we're seeing a very much a paradigm shift in the way computing uh, and the way infrastructure is implemented. And I think, uh, you know, from SolidFire's standpoint, we've kind of taken the, the approach that we've kind of seen what that looks like in terms of uh, how we've wanted to design things, and we've designed the capabilities to address that marketplace into our product from day one. So right now, um, you know, it's a, it's a four node solution. So we have four different types of platforms you can leverage. You can mix and match them. You can start with four, you know, of the smaller end units and scale up to one that's more capacity driven or more performance driven. Uh, mix and match nodes all you want. Like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's really unique in, it, in its feature set. In fact, that, you know, non-disruptive upgrades, uh, the ability to scale the solution to fit your needs uh, at the time you need them, right? So we're able to grow incrementally at a very small 1U footprint. Uh, and the nice thing about that, it gives you a lot of flexibility about how you place storage solutions inside your data center, um, as well as how you address cost constraints and you know, upgrade paths at year four, year five, year 10, whatever that might be. And of course, you know, what system wouldn't be complete without a very, fitch, a very rich uh, feature set? You know? I mean, all the check boxes are there. So. Uh, try not to, to hammer you guys over the top of the head with all the marketing stuff. Here's my one marketing slide. Yes, we are the Gartner number one in uh, critical capabilities for two years running now. So I think that that's something important when you do, you know, for those of you who are looking at the Gartner type of technology, uh, you know, uh, analyst positioning papers, we've done really well in that space. So, and obviously, you know, initially I think a lot of people think that, hey, you know, so far you guys are only doing service providers. And the reality is, yeah, we do a lot of service providers, a lot of hosting companies, a lot of cloud computing companies, but we also have a very rich ecosystem of customers in the, in the standard traditional enterprise space. And we do split a lot of our energy and time working to address their needs as well. So just a few of the people that we work with here. Okay, so let's get to the meat of actually what I'm here to talk about, which is agile infrastructure and what that looks like. So what is it, really? It is a series of basically, it's pre-qualified, pre-validated solutions, right? So what we've gone out and done is taken some best of breed components, put them together, validated them, validated workloads, tested those workloads, and in turn, turned over a rich set of documentation to give to our partners and our customers that will allow them to replicate that particular platform in their own environments. So you can start very small at a smaller scale and scale upward. And you know the reality there is, is we wanted to kind of approach this paradigm of IT as a service, software as a service deliverable, and put that into something that was easy for customers to deploy. So we've done presentations on, say, it's like zero to OpenStack in 90 minutes, or you know, VMware-enabled data center software-defined data center technologies. We're trying to take all of that stuff and work with our partners and our ecosystem uh, community members to build solutions that are viable and repeatable and easy. So really, you know, the advantage in that is, as a customer, let's say uh, we have a new application we're going to deliver, all right, we're going to pro pro provide a new service to the organization. We've, we've acquired somebody. We need to build some new uh, you know, IT technology out there. Uh, it's something that's rapidly provisionable and repeatable. And I think that that's something I talk about a lot in terms of the automation technologies that we leverage is being able to be rapid, to be able to address and repeat those results over and over again and get the same result. And so that it's something that you can have a lot of comfort in deploying, right? I've seen it done 20 times. So every time we've done it, it's been the same way and it's been very easy to get out there. So um, there's a really nice set of deep integrations. So we go through and we kind of validate uh, we will do all of the scripting. We will do PowerShell in integration. We have a lot of a, a really great team that's put together a lot of uh, time and effort to validate these solutions. So if we if we've gone out and done a you know an agile infrastructure solution and we've highlighted it on Cisco and and VMware, then it's got say you know MongoDB databases running on there and when LAMP stack solution and VDI and all of these different workloads running in conjunction and we show what the performance profile looks like. And through the unique feature set within our quality of service, we're able to isolate the performance of those workloads on the same Flash platform, where many Flash storage solutions today 
are dedicated point solutions towards a specific uh, integration or a specific platform. You know, I have a VDI workload that I want to attach. I have a database uh, solution that I want to address. What we've tried to do is take Flash and make it more approachable and more disparate. Right, take a lot of different disparate workloads and have them work in conjunction and eliminate the whole concept of noisy neighbor or resource contention. So, and you know, also make that quite flexible. So, why, you know, really, why do we do it? Is because we, we noticed in the infrastructure, in our infrastructure, our customer community that you know, there are all these generalized buzzwords around uh, these technologies, but we didn't really see a whole lot of storage platforms out there that could address all of them at once. And so, you know, aspects of multi-tenancy, uh, aspects of scalability, um, predictable performance, the automation, the integration with tools like Puppet, Chef, Ansible, and Salt, um, you know, disparate cloud workloads and disparate systems. Take, for instance, our relationship with Platform 9, where we're able to integrate with VMware and OpenStack at the same time through their uh, cloud-based management platform. Those are the types of solutions that we're looking to address uh, with platforms like our Agile Infrastructure Solution. So, you know, we're trying to deliver a good cost point around performance, uh, predictable performance and quality of service and economics around what a converged infrastructure solution looks like. And I think the reality there is that when you are looking at, uh, you know, we have a lot of technologies that are out there today that we would consider converged infrastructure. You have a V-Block, you have a FlexPod, you have the hyper-converged systems, you have the VX rack, you have, you know, things from IBM and Dell and HP and all those. And those are fairly prescriptive solutions, right? You kind of have to buy what they've put in whatever one of those form factors looks like. So you kind of have a small and a medium and a large uh, choice to look from. But if you want to adjust or change any of those components inside there, you don't have that flexibility. And it does tend to be something that's, you know, a, a little longer time to, you know, time to turn on. That day two operation takes a little bit longer to get to than some other solutions that are out there today. You know, what we've wanted to do is basically take, you know, those best of breed networking components. So let's say we did a solution with Cisco where we're going to use Cisco UCS, Cisco UCS computing, solid fire storage, and then we can wrap something like you know, an application platform or a cloud platform like with VMware or with OpenStack, and we can place those on top of that and start small and scale as needed. And our team will help integrate that with you as well as our rich partner ecosystem who have, you know, the expertise and able to deliver this. So this is not something that just, you know, any old person can just turn on and get going in a few seconds, but the thing is you kind of have to have a skill set that's available. So it's like, we're going to work with you, we're going to work with our partners to kind of deliver this type of, you know, extreme density, you know, with operational efficiencies and a modular designed and approach to fit your needs. So you can start small, you know, maybe you have two controller nodes and three compute nodes and a four node solid fire array, and that's the smallest unit of measurement you want to do. The nice thing about this is you can scale those solutions independent of each other. Right, I can, I can expand my networking, I can expand my compute, I can expand my storage in a smaller measure of increment at the one server mo uh, level or the one storage controller level, right? I have a little more flexibility in choosing the components. And like I said, since we've gone through and done all the, the hard work of the pre-validation and making sure that these components work together, and those are available as logical configuration guides and physical configuration guides and the actual reference architecture documentation themselves, you have the ability to go back and reference those and fine-tune and adjust. You know, the reality is to us, compute is compute, networking is networking, but storage is solid fire. So, like I said, scale in every vector. Uh, in terms of what we're able to actually go out and provision, you know, you get to choose your compute platform, you can choose your networking aspect, and then adjust those at the fly as the solution grows. So we've started to see with a lot of customers who are going to deploy private cloud for the first time, or you know, they're making maybe this is their second pass, their first round didn't work quite quite well. Uh, they're able to go here, take a look at this validated design, and run forward with it, and then, like I said, adjust as necessary. Maybe it's a very compute-heavy workload, scale the compute out significantly and adjust the storage at a smaller increment. So today what's in the stack, and so we're at a VMware conference, so I won't talk too much about OpenStack, but we do have OpenStack solutions. But today we have agile infrastructure solutions that run on Cisco and the Cisco UCS family of products, as well as Dell and the Force 10 networking components. And wrapped around those are 
VMware technologies, right? So vSphere 5.5, vSphere 6, we're working on vCloud Director as well. And those types of solutions, like I said, are going to be validated. We're going to, to do the end-to-end -end work to make sure that that's something that is addressable and leverageable by you as a customer, and it's easily repeatable. So what we do is, like I said, we start out here. If I'm a customer, I'm like, hey, I want an agile infrastructure solution. I want this, this is great, awesome stuff. Uh, you're going to choose your platform. In that respect, you know, today we have two partners that we work with, Dell and Cisco both, in terms of the compute networking. Then you're going to look at your storage configuration, which is going to be some combination of solid fire technologies. It could be either four or the 2405 systems, which is going to be the smaller entry level footprint, or it could be a mix and match. The nice thing about solid fire is that we can take disparate nodes and have them work in conjunction, a mixed workload or a mixed cluster to address your needs in an incremental basis. Like I said, I may need more performance at the beginning, so I may choose a performance-oriented model. I may need more capacity at the beginning. I may choose capacity models, or I may mix and match those to address the workload. And you know, we work with you to help size that environment. Then we're going to download automation scripts. So be it through GitHub, through our own online site, our, our, our solidfire.com website, there's going to be a rich repository of automation tools and integration packs that work with the flavor of your choice. Work with us to find out what that looks like. You know, like I said, go to GitHub. All of our repositories and our information is up there. You can go download it anytime. Uh, the solidfire.com website has, uh, you know, a ton of information that's up there. In fact, more information you possibly could read, uh, unless you like have insomnia like I do and need to get up and read in the middle of the night to try and fall back asleep. Um, but like I said, the, the, uh, the documentation is up there. Everything is available for you, like I said, up on GitHub and whatnot. And then, you know, we have the designs. You know, the validated design, go up there. Um, we will, like everybody else, uh, ask you to at least send us your email address. So you can send us that, and then we'll provide you with the documentation and get you up and running. So um, that's kind of how the workflow works, right? So then once you have that, you kind of read through that, you can deploy it. Or you can work with one of our certified partners to have them kind of come in and do this all for you. So, you know, the information is there if you have a customer who wants to do this and run with it on your own. But also, like I said, we have a, a number of certified partners that can come in and do this for you. So those are the choices you get to make, right, in terms of how you want to deploy this agile infrastructure solution. So <clears throat> kind of in closing here, uh, what we have is, like I said, we're trying to fuel that you know, software-defined data center and that next-generation data center with our technologies and you know, build true business value for you as a customer. We're, we're, we're focused on outcomes and not so much just selling a box or a uh, device. It is part of the solutions that we're providing, but what we've tried to do is to really wrap around some true uh, business value-related outcome that will allow you to take advantage of this type of technology, uh, especially with the workloads that we're starting to look at. If you look at the keynote here at VMworld, you know, there's a lot of talk around uh, ready for any, being able to leverage any application onto any platform, any device. Um, you know, if you look at some of the software or hardware solutions that are available today, they may not be up to snuff or ready to have that kind of agility. They may not be able to understand or even leverage uh, the capabilities that we're going to be able to put forward with that. So, you know, <clears throat> we start to look at what that model looks like. You know, it tends to be something that's deeply integrated with the platform of choice that you're wanting to leverage. Like I said, when it comes to VMware and OpenStack technologies, we have deep integration with both of those. Uh, in terms of, you know, what it looks like in terms of the automation space, we have a rich ecosystem and a very great team that's dedicated to working with our customers and partners on automation technologies that you know can be somewhat complex and uh, difficult at times to, to wrap your head around if it's your first time. So uh, please feel free to reach out to anybody at the Solid Fire team at any time to uh, get some information. Reach out to Josh Atwell or Jeremiah Dooley or myself or Keith Norby. Um, there's a whole group of people out here that are just chomping the bit to talk with you. So um, I think that I'm bumping up on my time here. I got five minutes. Can I break dance? Since I have so many people here in the audience asking questions, um, there's uh, absolutely no one standing in front of me, which has made it very nice because I've had to picture no one naked um, in order to get up and speak. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't know if I could filibuster for five more minutes, so we may have to go for some dead air. Once again, hey, um, thank you very much for listening. Um, thank you, giant screen over there, for talking over me the entire time. And uh, I hope everybody has a great VM world.